Hello, I'm Robbie Clark. Welcome to my workshop. Um, I had a, a, a recent comment on one of my videos and the, the gentleman that sent the comment um, asked me about my milling machine, uh, whether I liked it, you know, would I recommend it? Uh, well, yes, I would recommend uh, the, the milling machine I've got. It's uh, a very basic uh, mini mill. Now these are obviously made by possibly more than one company in China and imported by a number of different distributors in, in lots of different countries. Um, this particular one uh, is imported by a company called Amadil um, who are in London. Uh, the model is uh, you can see here um, XJ12, it's obviously a very small machine. Um, I mean, pretty obviously, <laughs> I would like a bigger milling machine, but because my workshop is very small, I'm desperately uh, limited by space. Um, and I wanted um, really a, a bench mounted machine. And when I could, I, I guess, have sourced a base for it, uh, which the mill could stand on. Um, but for a lot of operations um, here in the workshop, I mean, I have to move uh, the position of the mill on the bench that it's it's on at the moment. Um, um, you can probably see next to it is my Chinese mini la mini lathe, um, which coincidentally uh, was imported by the same company, Amadil. I mean, um, uh, neither of these. Uh, machines were bought directly by me from them. They were both bought second hand. Um, the lathe I bought, um, I think now it's probably about seven years ago, uh, 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 just before uh, my workshop was set up. Um, once the workshop was, was set up and I started kitting it out, I, I started looking around for a milling machine. Um, I bought the um, mini mill here in, I think it was um, 2016, um, after I've had the workshop for, I guess, less than a year. Um, very lucky with this one. Um, the, the, the chap that bought this, um, after buying it, realised it wasn't going to do the, the, the job that he wanted to, to do with the machine, um, so he put it on sale. So. The machine wasn't very old when I bought it and had had hardly any use at all. Um, the thing is that when I bought the, the milling machine, it, it was early days for me, uh, only sort of learning um, how to use equipment in the workshop. I'd never used the milling machine before. Um, so it's once you, you get a piece of equipment, uh, it's then you perhaps find out what the shortfalls of it are. Um, there weren't really too many with the mini mill. I, I must admit, it, it's, it does everything I want it to do. Um, there's quite a lot of modifications um, I've made to it. I, I'm not going to go into those now because I have mentioned these before in the very first video that I put up um, just over a year ago was on the mini mill and the modifications I've carried out to it um, since then. Um, I'd added a, a, a number of uh, things to it. The most recent thing that I'd added to the machine was uh, the DRO. It's a three axis DRO, um, which has improved the, the operation of the mill incredibly. I mean, I, I really wish I'd have had one of these years before, but it, it wasn't something that in the, the earlier days that I could afford anyway. And this was actually uh, a gift to me from one of my subscribers, a very generous, generous gift indeed. Um, and there's a number of videos also that I've put out on the various stages of, uh, of fitting the, the DRO to the machine. Um, I think really the only major gripe, if you like, that I have with it is something that I didn't realise how important it, it it possibly was is that this machine doesn't have a quill. Uh, the quill is like on a bench drill. This section of the mill can be raised up and down with the handle here. Um, so on this mill, when I'm uh, uh, drilling with the, the, the mini mill, 
um, obviously you've got to use this control here to raise the, the, the whole head up and down. Um, and when I've got used to it, um, obviously I've been using this for quite a number of years now. Um, it's it probably sort of stiffer in use, which um, just needs a bit of care when you're, you're drilling into a workpiece. And of course, uh, one thing I added was the, um, the the sort of air brake system on, on the side of the machine, which made this uh, a little bit firmer in operation than, than what I had before. Um, it would have been nice to have had a, a milling machine where you, you uh, could set the head the head height that normally is from a separate uh, wheel either mounted at the top of the column on the side or on the top of the column to raise the head up and down and then the large uh, control here would just raise this part up and down that's, that's something I, I think I would have really liked um, and also what would have uh, been useful also is um, a larger mill bed as well one sort of wider than what I have here um, but I get on with it if there's any um, operation I need where I need a, a lot of space on the bed obviously I've got to take the vice off which then putting it back on it's got to be retrammed back again which is, is a bit of a nuisance but um, you can see how cramped a space I have for the mill between my big uh, Myford lathe and my Chinese mini lathe on this side. The mini lathe I, I have brought over uh, nearer to the um, milling machine so that I can use the lathe easily as well. Um, but when I need more travel on the, uh, the bed of the mill I have to push uh, the mini mini lathe uh, over uh, to, the, to the side so that I've got more clearance here um, but apart from that and I, I love the, the, the machine it, it's it's done so much work for me um, now that I've got uh, all the various modifications I, I think I could do to it it's operating exactly the way I, I want it um, and I think it's like anything else, once you really get used to um, using the, the, the machine, uh, the easier it becomes really. So yes, I, 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 I would recommend that this machine. Um, it, I did get it at a very, very reasonable price and I have noticed that over the last six years or so that even second hand these machines have got quite a bit dearer. So. It's nice to know that uh, the machine now is probably worth twice as much as I paid for it uh, originally. Um, nothing sort of much more um, I, I can really say about it really. Um, I think that uh, if you're thinking of buying a mini mill, um, particularly new, um, I think a lot of the, the mills uh, like this now have improved in that a lot of them have a much wider bed to the mill uh, than, than my one and of course if you are prepared to pay a little bit extra over and above this 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 model you, you would get one with a quill which I, I think I would recommend doing that finding one with a a, a quill on it N not that you would use the quill for milling operations if you're milling on or milling only on the milling machine then you would raise that the head of the milling machine up and down um, as they say a, qu a quill to drill is the general rule and not using a quill uh, to adjust the the depth of cut with uh, a milling operation because with the quill uh, right move right down it, it, it is less stable at the tall end so that's the sort of thing to bear in mind um, doesn't really matter with this because um, this is uh, sort of if you like permanently fixed to the head of the machine head of the machine so that, that really isn't a problem at all so making my answer would be yes I, I would recommend this um, Perhaps uh, if I'd have known a little bit more at the time I was looking for a, a milling machine, I would have got uh, a slightly larger model. Couldn't have had anything 
too big because of the, the given space I have in the workshop really. Um, if I'd have got something larger then something would have had to have, to have gone. Uh, probably uh, I would have sold the um, the Chinese mini, mini lathe but uh, it'd be rather sad to see that go really because it's something I, I do use quite a lot. Um, uh, I sort of uh, mix operations on that with my, my big uh, lathe as well and sometimes I, I have something that I'm working on in the MyFred lathe but then there's something else that I want to, to make as well at the same time so I can turn to the um, the other lathe so having a couple of lathes is not uh, uh, a big problem for me really. But there we are, I hope that's um, answered uh, my commenter's question uh, on, on, the, on the mill here um, and uh, good luck to him in, in sort of finding one whether he's looking to go out and buy one brand new or looking uh, for a, a used one I don't know but uh, either way uh, best of luck um, I've got something else that um, I wanted to share also in this video uh, not related to anything here in the workshop but something that I'm going to hope you might find interesting as well. Hello again, um, I recently showed a, a video where I'd made uh, my own version of a, a Mammoth Miner steam engine. Um, I obviously had an interest in Mammoth engines for a very very long time and at uh, a recent model engineering exhibition I went to, Mamad were there and I was able to have a, a nice long chat with the, the people on the stand. Um, but prior to this um, I started looking around to see if there were any any books uh, on Mamad. There are um, bits on YouTube about it, uh, old Mamad uh, TV ads and uh, video showing some of the production of the uh, Mammoth engines and I'd also uh, did a search and read about it as well. And I discovered that um, a gentleman had produced a, a book uh, with it, like the sort of the history of, of the Mammoth company and Mammoth engines but while I was looking um, I think this is a, a sort of a self-published book but on sort of further looking on eBay um, I came across some um, this book I, mean, I guess a lot of you are familiar with it uh, Toy Shop Steam um, and it deals with um, it, uh, sort of model or toy engines uh, produced in England but uh, the book is actually predominantly on Mammoth um, the gentleman that wrote this um, Basil Harley apparently has a, or had, I, I don't know if he's still around or not, but had a very very big collection of, uh, of model steam engines and a huge number of Mammoth models and um, he, he notes that um, he's made visits to the Mammoth factory or factories in fact a, a number of times to talk to the, the gentleman who started the Mammoth factory and his son who that works with him there also um, and with lots of conversations was able to to produce this book it's beautifully illustrated it has a lot of um, black and white images a lot of it, uh, pictures of the production line if you like of, at the factory in the middle some very nice uh, colour photographs of the various engines from his collection um, and details of other manufacturers that made uh, similar types of engines at the time. There are lots of uh, copies of old adverts with original prices as well. Uh, that engine was 29 shillings and sixpence. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, it's a very interesting book indeed. Uh, and absolutely fascinating. Um, when I, I, I bought this, um, the it was the lady that, that put it up for sale um, sent the book along to me with some additional bits of information as well. Now, in, in the inside cover, 
the book is actually signed by the author. I think there was I think there was only one edition ever of this anyway, and it was bought by I think it's a Bernie Porter, and um, he'd obviously contacted the uh, the author of the book, asking him if he would kindly sign the book for him. And I think this was done through. Um, this envelope came with it as well through the Horsham Museum where there was a, a sort of an exhibition of the author's uh, engine collection or part of the collection but the person I bought the book from was the, parent, the second owner she'd bought this book uh, used for her husband and she included with it a, a little letter to me just uh, saying that hoping I was pleased with the purchase and saying that uh, she purchased it for her husband and she was the second owner of the book um, and that she has no connection with the the person who had originally bought it just sort of sort of quite nice for us to sort of include that but she also included some other bits and pieces um, there was a letter from uh, Basil Harley to uh, Mr. Porter, um, talking about him seeing the the, uh, the exhibition and him collecting the signed copy of the book. I'm going to hold that near a minute while me read it to you. Hopefully, you could you could stop the video. I and you could see that and be able to read uh, basically what he said there. So that was quite nice to have that and I wasn't expecting to get these these bits as well rather nice that um, she'd kept those uh, bits and pieces with the book and this also included was a, a newspaper cutting showing the author with uh, one of his models uh, obviously relating to the uh, uh, the exhibition or a selection of his his collection so it was, it was sort of quite interesting to have that rather unexpected and of course a bit unexpected to um get a signed copy as well but uh i know uh, there are a lot of books produced in, in quite small numbers where the author signs most of the editions anyway and from not related to this at all or related to engineering at all um my interest in, in earlier times in photography I bought uh, a book by the Member of Parliament Dennis Healy he wrote a book on his interest in photography and uh, I bought one of his books they were actually being sold off by Liberties in London and I, I bought the book and it wasn't until I got it home he'd signed the copy so that was a, another book by chance that I picked up pre-signed and also um, another book that I bought uh, many, many years ago. It was the autobiography of Kenneth Williams, uh, the comedian and uh, in a lot of the, or well, most of the carry-on films. Um, that also I discovered was a signed copy. So I was quite pleased to, to grab that as well. <laughs> but anyway, nothing to do with this. But I just thought I'd show that because I think that's such a, a lovely book and, and all the pictures really um, to give me a bit of inspiration really on some of the, the model engines that that I've been uh, producing uh, not anything like the um, the Mammoth models because there's only the, the, the Mammoth copy that I made the only one I've ever made that, that actually has a boiler on it as well but uh, there's some in inspiration here and some sort of very very nice um, images. So I, I thought they might be of interest uh, to you. Uh, the book, sort of looking at the the, the listing where, where this book was. So I didn't buy it straight away. I went back to have another look, and they were being sold at all sorts of uh, prices. I uh, being me, I picked the, the cheapest one, which turned out uh, to be in absolutely beautiful condition I think the condition of this was better than a lot of the other ones I saw on eBay so it's uh, 
so they're quite quite nice to have and you know an interesting read as well but, but i hope that might have been uh, of interest to you if you have any interest in that mammoth it's it is well worth uh, looking out for but anyway that's uh, basically it for today um thank you very very much for joining me a bit of a, a mixed bunch uh, here today when i hadn't sort of particularly planned on on making a video really i had not been doing haven't been doing very much in the workshop over the last week or so but it's having that uh, as i mentioned earlier that inquiry from someone about the mini machine i thought rather than just send a, a very long reply to him if i did the, the little video that he could watch if he likes to and uh, have my comments on the mini machine well, anyway uh, thank you very much for joining me and uh, i hope to have a, a more interesting video for you very soon bye bye for now